I am Alexey, and I will present our paper ClickHouse Lightning Fast Analytics for Everyone. This work is done with my colleagues Robert Schulze, Tom Schreiber, Ilya Yatsishin, and Riyad Dahimene. And I am Alexey Milavidov. So let's take a look what is ClickHouse at a high level. ClickHouse is an open source, column oriented, distributed OLAP database. It combines industry best practices with innovation, and it became hugely popular in the past years as one of the fastest analytical databases on the market. Its development started in 2009, and in 2016, the code was open sourced. ClickHouse is a column store, and it is best suited for filter and aggregation queries. Under the hood, ClickHouse uses uh, a storage layer based on LSM trees, and this means database works best with append-only workloads. But it is obviously not only for append-only workloads. To achieve high availability and load balancing, users can configure data replication and sharding across multiple ClickHouse nodes in a cluster. The replication schema uh, is fault-tolerant, and by default it is eventually consistent. Uh, our users deploy ClickHouse uh, whenever data set, uh, our data sets are huge and performance is critical. And common use cases include business intelligence, logs and event analysis, real-time dashboards, interactive data exploration. So the key feature of ClickHouse is its high performance. In our paper, we compared hold and cold runtimes on the ClickBench for seven popular analytical databases. And ClickBench is a benchmark containing 42 real-world reporting queries extracted for, from one of web analytics uh, platforms. And we show hot and cold runtimes on this chart. Lower numbers are better. As you can see, ClickHouse has the best overall performance among real-world production-grade databases. Uh, in ClickBench, you can find a comparison with over 45 different databases. The benchmark is open source, reproducible, and available at benchmark.clickhouse.com. As you can imagine, optimizing performance is a never-ending story, never-ending challenge that involves many difficult trade-offs. And still, it is possible to continuously improve performance uh, through the existence, through the history of ClickHouse. You can see this chart. It goes down, and this is all right, because lower is better. Uh, it is based on a benchmark named versions benchmark, and it combines four different uh, data sets and four different benchmarks, including ClickBench, MGBench, Star Schema Benchmark, and New York Taxi Rides. And over the past six years, we improved the performance on average by 1.7 times. And this is just the beginning. Uh, in just eight years, <coughs> ClickHouse became one of the most popular open source analytics databases, with over 36,000 stars on GitHub and more than 2,000 contributors. The database runs pretty much on everything uh, starting from your laptop or Raspberry Pi up to powerful clusters with thousands of machines. And ClickHouse is used by hundreds of companies uh, such as Uber, eBay, Cisco, Netflix, and Disney to handle the most demanding workloads. Let's dive deeper into the ClickHouse architecture. What does it take to achieve high performance? The most interesting part is uh, about storage engines, table engines. Table engines encapsulate the location and format of table data. And we can uh, divide table engines into three categories. First, uh, the main category, uh, the main type is merge tree table engine. It represents the native storage format for ClickHouse on disk or in external storage. I will tell about it uh, on one of next slides. 
the second category is uh, special purpose table engines, such as in-memory table engines, distributed table engines to uh, represent the cluster. And the third category is about virtual table engines uh, for integration with external data sources, message queues, or other database management systems such as MySQL, Postgres, MongoDB, Redis. So let's talk about the merge tree table engine. Uh, it resembles log structure at merge tree uh, in the sense that every insert creates uh, a new data part on disk. And the table is consisted of immutable data parts. Once created, uh, parts are uh, continuously merged in the background to a larger data part. Uh, but unlike log structured merge tree, parts are actually um, equivalent to each other, so there is no explicit hierarchy, and select will use all data parts. In the optimistic case, the data is inserted in batches. So one insert will uh, create a data part with like 10,000 of records. Uh, we also provide asynchronous insert mode, where multiple concurrent clients can do many inserts at the same time with just a single record, and these inserts will be combined in memory inside a buffer, and then the combined uh, data will form a data part. So the ingestion rate is uh, typically limited only by the speed of disk. Let's take a look at uh, a single data part. For example, in this example, we will use a web analytics data set with uh, page impressions statistics. Each data part is sorted by the table's primary key, in this case, uh, case by the event time column. And parts are divided into smaller units named granules. Granules are the smallest data units that can be uh, loaded and read from disk. And granules are also combined into compressed blocks. And for compression, we can use generic compression methods such as LZ4, ZSTD, uh, and, uh, etc. cetera, uh, various uh, logical compression codecs like Delta, GCD, greatest common uh, denominator, and specialized compression codecs such as Gorilla 4 time series or encryption codecs, etc. And it's worth noting that using compression is important despite the high performance of data storage, even on SSDs, even on memory tables, it makes sense. Uh, the next is about data pruning. Uh, you can guess that the most efficient way to process the data is to skip it and not process at all. So let's take a look at this technique. Uh, the first one is uh, the primary key index. The primary key contains uh, a record for each uh, granule, just a single record. And the data is sorted by uh, the primary keys, and the primary key is sparse. For example, uh, every granule contains uh, 8,192 records, uh, and for a table with uh, a billion uh, records, it, it will take only 100,000 of index uh, entries. Uh, and the benefit is that uh, this data structure can be always loaded in memory. You can even have like uh, several trillions uh, records in a table on a single server. Uh, so the query execution will simply use this mapping to skip and read only uh, the relevant granules. The next technique for data pruning is uh, table projections. Projections uh, are uh, alternative representations of a data on disk. They can uh, be sorted by a different primary key. Then they can be pre-aggregated. And projections work on a data part granularity. So they can be created for certain data parts or not created for other data parts. And the query will be automatically optimized by choosing uh, the best uh, suitable projections. It's a really powerful tool, but the downside, uh, they can duplicate, just duplicate your data, increasing the data storage. 
The third technique uh, is uh, data skipping indexes. It is uh, like a small uh, statistic or a sketch of your data for a subset of granules. You read this uh, sketch of your data and decide if the granular could be skipped. There are simple examples like min-max uh, values, unique values, uh, and more complex like bloom filters or even n-gram bloom filters for full text search. Okay, this was about data pruning, but merge tree tables also apply data transformations in the background, and this is a really interesting technique. There are a few examples, for example, uh, replacing merge tree can implement updates, asynchronous updates happening in, back, in the background by replacing the old versions of the data with the new versions. Uh, aggregating merge tree, it is also interesting technique because ClickHouse can store intermediate state of aggregation such as unique uh, or quantile as a data type. And this data type is a first class citizen. It can be stored in the table and aggregating merge tree will aggregate in the background during merge. It happens incrementally. And there are TTL merges that can just delete old data by specific rules. Merges are de decoupled from inserts and selects so they at least uh, not uh, directly affect the performance of insert and select. What about query engine? We have state-of-the-art vectorized query engine and the main principle is to parallelize everything on every level. We parallelize by data elements, by CPU cores and by server shards. Let's take a look at parallelization on the lowest level, vectorization with CMD instructions. Uh, and it can be done in uh, multiple ways. One way is explicit vectorization with CMD intrinsics written by uh, the engineer. Another way is implicit vectorization by the uh, compiler. And everything can be used with dynamic dispatch. So we detect which CPU set is available, say AVX512 or AVX2, and choose the best implementation. We also support ARM with ARM Neon. We parallelize across CPU cores. So when we build the query pipeline, we split it into multiple independent lanes. And data is processed mostly independently. Uh, in the middle, we uh, might need to repartition the data if the uh, distribution of the data between lanes is non-uniform. But typically, the number of lanes is just as the number of CPU cores. And we parallelize across uh, multiple servers for distributed data processing. The initiator node pushes as much work as possible to the other nodes, depending on the query plan, and combines the results. Uh, so processing capacity can be scaled horizontally by adding more cluster nodes. So you can find more details in our paper, interesting low-level optimizations. And I advise you to read uh, the paper, to read the source code, to be among 2,000 contributors. Maybe you want to be 2,000 first contributor. Thank you. Use ClickHouse. Thank you for your time. Uh, not necessarily, it can be done on a different nodes. When you have multiple replicas, all replicas can participate in merges, or you, you can forbid specific nodes to do merges, and then merges will be done by other nodes. You can even make a hybrid cluster when some queries 
some uh, nodes serve queries and other nodes will process merges. And it is especially interesting when you can scale this cluster dynamically so merges will be processed faster. But by default, they will just uh, compete. Uh, if they happen on the same node, they will compete for resources. Uh, first of all, it is not only eventual consistency, but let's assume that we do merges independently on each server. When you do a select query, this query will take a snapshot of uh, the set of data parts and uh, use this snapshot for select. Until select will end, these data parts will leave. All data parts are immutable, so merges are only creating new data parts, and then atomically swap these data parts in the uh, actual snapshot. Uh, yeah, and we offer not only eventual consistency, you can enable quorum inserts, and also there is a mode of operation with shared storage. And with shared storage, you get immediate uh, consistency when all replicas immediately see the, uh, uh, the new data. Uh, how aggregating merge tree works uh, with uh, secondary indexes. I mean, deletion updates. Ah, uh, you can define several modes uh, how the, they will react to mutations such as deletes. One mode is invalidate the projection. So projections will stop being used. It is just invalidated. Another option is rebuild. So the projection will be invalidated, but scheduled for rebuilding. And another option is to do nothing and process the queries from this data, even if it is temporarily inconsistent with the uh, original data. Last question. Thanks, a very, very interesting talk. Um, I have two questions if we have time, but the first one is, uh, I'm curious about the vectorization part, where you're saying that you can sort of dynamically dispatch based on the, the CPU type and instruction set available. Uh, I wonder like, how, how does that work from a developer perspective? Like, can you should write multiple versions of that code? Or kind of mm -hmm. It can be done in a few ways. One way is to explicitly write uh, the code for each instruction set, like uh, at the top for AVX12. And then you use this uh, macros in the source code that will uh, uh, compile them with different uh, compiler, uh, compiler options for the uh, target. And there will be uh, uh, the code for dispatching that is automatically uh, generated. And another way, you can write the code as is, just like a for loop uh, you can see at the bottom. And uh, you also use a macros to declare it as a multi-target. And this macros will duplicate this code with different options. And the compiler will generate the code for AVX12, for AVX2, and SSE4.2. And also, there will be a dispatching routine. I see. And those, what are those terms? They're scalar functions, or they're like the you know, implementation before you are on all of the above? Uh, typically, this is for um, functions uh, that uh, can be applied in a loop independently. For, in this example, the simplest example is just a sum function. We also uh, do it for aggregate functions, but it is slightly, slightly more complicated. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Sasika. Okay, thank you.